the tares are planted among the wheat, what do they do? Go and read the message of power of transformation. But the Brenham says, other weed, they wind themselves at the stem of the tree. Go and read that message, power of transformation. He says they live from the life of that tree until they suck you to death. Very strategic to make sure nobody grows, nobody goes to the rapture. There was a gentleman by the name of, you know, Joseph Spengler. He was working at the United Nations. He's the one that removed the Ascension Day. In our calendar, do you remember? We had the Ascension Day. Yeah, they, he removed that. And then because that they have a laser beam, they, are quite, they received, you know, they got a laser beam technology, and then they started to say, nobody comes down, that means the coming of the Lord. And nobody goes out, that means rapture. So now they think, that's the United Nations, they think they've managed to block the coming of the Lord, and they managed to block the going out of the bride. Go and check David Spengler. So now, these spirits, Rabbi Adam says, 20 years from the war, 1964. He's talking 1964. He says now they are in New York under the auspices of United Nations. We're going to read that. Notice what happened under the 60s. They were turned loose on the Jews. The persecution of the Jews, the supernatural devil, nearly 2,000 years. They lose by Stalin, Hitler, upon the Jews. You say, well, that is in Rome. It's the same spirit. They've done the same thing that they did to Christians in the old pagan Roman days. That was now during the Dark Ages. Watch the natural Israel and spiritual church. Now, we, as we separate here, turn loose on the Jews. I just want to quickly... Uh, See exactly where it's affecting us. Now, part of 183, it says, What was it done in cunningness? With the Jews, it was not cunningness, it was open and rough. If you study the Second World War and the First World War, they were killing these Jews in Germany openly through some legislations. But when it comes to the bride, it's cunningness. He said, he comes in like flatteries. What has he done? He's bringing the Protestant Ecumenical Council of the World Council of Churches, the spirit of Antichrist, upon them, bringing them to the slaughter. We touched Friday. Just like the other in the hour to call the bride. It is in that hour when these demonic forces were trying to kill Israelites in Egypt. They had midwives to kill children. They also strengthened their laws of oppression to double up to work overtime so that they don't have time to worship God. And the Jews cry to God. And look what is going on today. We work, 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 work. We don't, the time we come home, we don't even have time to pray. As a result, now we neglect even our children. Because we take our children to crash. To a stranger that you don't know. And then now that child will live with that stranger for eight hours to nine hours. You are at work working for a salary. Because in the name of working for my family. The time you come, the demands and the responsibilities of a mother kicks in. You must cook. That child wants you. He has never been with you for eight hours. When she cries, you put him in a bottle you make him give him a tablet, you give him a phone, or you watch TV. We're removing parenthood. That child is not parented properly. And the husband comes work tired. 
When is daddy come home? Working overtime, supposed to knock off four, is knocking off at ten. Called the bond, the car. Those are legitimate things that break family structure, breaks your Christianity, break your worship. Cunningness. You understand? Then next to no time, that child goes to sleep without a father, without a mother. Then it goes to a stranger. The following day, no matter how that child cries, take him, take him, take him, because you are rushing to go to work. That child is calling, Mama, when are you going to be parenting me? Daddy, daddy's not there. He arrived 10 o'clock, 6 o'clock, he was gone. Woke up 4 o'clock again. Same system. History repeats itself. And these children, they are growing without being. Now, when they, you force them to come to the message church, you never taught that child nothing. He doesn't know who's Brenham. He doesn't know the message. He doesn't know, doesn't know who's the pastor. Children come to church, they respect the pastor because he doesn't know. Respect the church, they don't know. When they come to senses, they leave the message. These are conditions that are prevailing during rapture time. Meanwhile, we're supposed to go to heaven with all our families. We drop them along the road like that. Because this spirit comes in cunningness. With flattering words. And God, he, Satan, use your boss to tell you, you want, you want an increment? You know? Yes. All right, just work another three hours for me, please. You can get all the money that you want to have. But when you lose children, you're losing your very purpose of existence. That's why our children, church, they are in a very bad shape. Because we have not attended to them. We did not tell them the truth. Go and read the message called, you know, teaching on Moses. Even looking at their books, encouraging them not to copy at school. They must study to know what they must pass. Now they're depending on other. We don't even know whether they've got homeworks or no homeworks. We don't pray with them. Now, what are these? He says now, they unite churches in the hour of calling the bride. Loose in ecclesiastical church spirit. Then they spray the message church with a religious spirit. You see? Now we've got funny things. I was born in the message. What is that? I was born in the message. Now, what, now tell me from the word of God, what is that? When Joshua, those that were claimed to be born in the message, he circumcised them again. He did not trust their birth by their fathers in the message. He circumcised them again. And these children now, they are confident because they are told a lie. I'm born in the message. They were only taken to baptism. Water baptism. They were not taught the Holy Spirit. They were not taught how to repent. They, were not, they are arrogant more than the children of the world. And you can't tell them because they are part of the bride. Again, another girl. I met in Cape Town. Using drugs, my sister. Using drugs. Met her. I said, are you not so? I said, yes. And then she said, yeah, I thought you guys were already gone in the rapture. Hey. <laughs> when is the rapture happening? You know, is Los Angeles still around? Now, you know, that kind. Because she's told a lie. You see? Now they are taking Billy Paul for something that is not even in the spoken word. You see? Another waste of time. Right. Now, these ecclesiastical, they are loose over the church. Loose upon what? Not upon the denomination, but the bride. These six seal spirits is to make sure you don't go to the rapture. 
Just as they were telling, you remember what, 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 what uh, uh, the king of Egypt was saying? He says, okay, fine. You can go, but leave for us children. Yeah. Why children? Oh. Why children? Why was Pharaoh interested in the children of the message? Why was he interested? Because the children are the next generation. They are the generation that the world must, must select for the rapture. Amen. And these are children that these spirits are taking. These children are not trained properly. You see? Our girls, they can't even cook. But they want to be wives. Can I say it? Mothers don't train girls how to wash dishes, how to cook, how to clean the house, how to prepare and make the bed. What do you think they will do to their husband? What do you think they will do to their husband? You see how things are twisted, church. The devil twists things deliberately so upon the bride. We are the only people that's got standards. And those standards are broken. You see? They are broken. I tell the brother who works on Sunday, he says, have you, I ask, have you ever tell your boss you are worshipping? Why is it easy for him to select you to work on Sunday while the sinners are drinking beer? Did you ever go to the office and tell boss, listen, how many days do I have to work a week? And it says six or five. So okay, when is my off days? You know, your off days on Thursday. So okay, fine. And when Monday? All right, fine. Listen, combine those two days. I'll work those two days, but not Sunday. Yeah. You must make sacrifices Amen. to worship. Amen. You must make sacrifices to worship. Amen. It's between death and life. But, he says, not upon you, but upon the bride. But here you'll get it. The bride will not go through that time. Bible says so. The church will, but not the bride. Can't you see? The minister then goes on. Then, he says, now, 189. Notice, the loosing of this ecclesiastical spirit, which says, is loose upon what? Upon the bride. Now he says, the loosing of that ecclesiastical spirit. Now Then he says, now 20 years later, after that war, that war ended in 1945. These spirits, they left war in 1944. Even history will prove that when you study that, you know, Second World War. They left 1944, and then there's an operation during that time, it's called Operation Paperclip. Go and check it. Then it was 2,000 scientists that left that war. And they were smuggled into New York. And the prophet is speaking about that. He says, he says, 20 years later, after that war, we see the loosing of the ecclesiastical spirit. What under? The seventh seal. And the seventh trumpet to the Jews. Now these are the two ministries. The seventh seal is the ministry for you to get out. The seventh trumpet is the ministry for 144,000 to get out. Amen. So now this spirit is attacking the seventh seal. Make sure nobody gets a revelation of knowing how to escape. It's a serious matter. And I wonder we've got so many churches who brush away the seventh seal. Seventh seal is for those seven seal. No, seventh is for the bride. It's a must. We must know it and appreciate it and live it out. It's a must. They are loose. 20 years later from the war, they are loose now. Okay, under the seventh, still seventh trumpet. Then now he says, what is it? Joining with the ecclesiastical church. The Ichumgal move, the World Council of Churches, 
has drove every man. What does the thing stand for? Why would you, why you have to surrender your evangelical teachings and things? You must compromise. You must tolerate everything. You see? And then now he says, how can two walk together unless they agree? They can't. Jesus said they can't. How can the church Methodist Baptist walk together? How can Church of Christ walk with the Presbyterian? How can a Catholic with a Protestant? How can Protestant walk with the with Protestant walk with Protestant? But the bride can walk with the word, Amen. which is Christ. Amen. It must be in agreement. Amen. No matter how tough it seems to be, teach yourself to agree with the word. No matter how strong it seems, it's not how you can do the word. But this case now, you must agree with the word. Just like Moses. The Bible said, thou shalt not kill. Moses was a murderer. He did not put that quotation aside and speak what he wants. He also spoke what was against him. Agree with the word. You see? Even though you know I hate few, if the Bible said love everybody, speak that word. Amen. Agree with the word. Amen. Even agree with the word against you. Amen. Against you. Amen. Let's learn to lean towards the word of God. Amen. God raptures the word, church. Hallelujah. He doesn't rapture conditions. He raptures the word. Much given is much required. That which was given must go back to God. That's why the sweat is here with us today. Brother Brennan will tell you that the sweat was not for God. The sweat was given to men. So when man was not qualified to hold the sweat, God took that sweat with him. Until there's a man qualified to handle the sweat. Now the sweat is back. The church has got a hand strong to handle the word. You see? He can't keep his sweat forever. That sweat was given to us. The book is for us. Now he says in part of 205. All right. Let me go quickly to 196. Now quickly. These supernatural demons under the auspices of United Nations unite to, united groups together, east and west. You see now where they are working? They are located now. They are under the auspice of United Nations. And then 205 it says now, you see, what the beast is, don't you, is power. And power, the ecclesiastical power, Jesus said, will be so close like the real thing to see the very ill possible, but he promised to have something here for us in that day Amen. that would not be deceived. That's the word. You see, what makes you not to be deceived is the word. Amen. When so things look so alike, almost the same, that the eye cannot catch, don't trust your eyes. Go to the Bible. That's why when they brought a certain man, they called the prophet, and then they told me, he's a prophet. I asked, what's the proof that he's a prophet? They said, it's a design. it can discern. I asked, Do, is the discernment a qualification of a prophet? Because we've got a prophet in the Bible who did not even heal a sick, John the Baptist. Is a prophet, is discernment, a qualification of a prophet. What does the prophet say? The revealer of the written word. Simple like that. When things look alike, there is, we, we are in Mosulbay, right? Now, in Mosulbay, we've got a lot of fish, over 2,500 species of different kinds of fishes. And therefore, there is a fish who will have lice. Eh? A lice. If you look at that fish, you see a skin. You don't see a lice. You see a skin. Right? You can scrub it with knife. 
It's still the skin. If you take that fish from head to tail, just put it closer to the fire, all the ashes are resurrecting. They are exposed by heat, not by knife. Normally you scrub your scales using knife. But that life will be so flat until you'll eat it. So now if you know this singing, we've got a lot of divorced brothers who were singing here with us. Not because she's got a long sketch, she's a sister. Give her a word test. And you use the message. Don't use your intellect. Because it's an hour of deception. You see? It's an hour of deception. And sometimes we don't even know who to marry or how to marry. We're not following the message properly. The Brother Branham teaches us, under no condition must you marry an unbeliever. Is that right? That's a standard. Now, how do you get a believer? Then how do you get a believer? The prophet is not considering our churches. The prophet, the standard is the word. The standard is the word. Look at all the divorces that we have taken, that has been passed. But you know that, look, check what kind of spirit was divorcing. It has never been believers. Never. Believers don't divorce. In spirit, we, we assumed to be believers because they walk among us. They're wearing long skirt, they cut hair, they sing, they preach. Every institution that God has established for redemption must be tested. When it comes to marriage, it's thoroughly tested. God is going to test that marriage left, right, and center. And what will remain in that marriage must be the word. Amen. Just like the church. The church will always have issues. Always will have problems. For the word only to remain as a standard and a supreme control. God during that time is going to give us something for us not to be deceived. And that is the word. And Christ, to make it manifest to us, so that it not becomes a theory, must be manifested. There is a, they are supernatural devils, but you believers are natural. How can you get into a ring with someone that is heavier than you? What do you think you will do to a heavyweight? When you are a bantamweight or a flyweight, what do you think it will do to you? You will be knocked out first round. So now these supernatural demons require us to be supernatural too. The moment we drop our guys to be natural, we are losing the battle. You see? We must see things through the word church. It will help us. He says, they are supernatural devils, unseen to the eye, but you can see what they are doing. From Euphrates, they are loosed. 1964, they are identified in America, and they are spreading through United Nations, even to Africa. And they are here today. While this group, 207, while this group here got 2,000 bond at Euphrates, Euphra, there has been 2,000 years, that is now seven church ages. Also, that church has bound the Holy Ghost for nearly 2,000 years. Now, according to seven church ages, and also, why am I against okay, organized so religion? Brother Benham will teach you. Since Nissan Council, right, hit, of that meeting, then there was a strategy done by the devil to make the church so lukewarm until the church denies the Bible. 
So now they were binding the Holy Ghost that it does not work in the church. The time Laodicea came, the Holy Ghost is not in the church anymore. He is outside. And here for now, he finds a prophet, the Holy Ghost. He enters in a prophet. And the prophet works among Pentecostal by knocking at each and every door. Giving the message. And the Pentecostals and the denomination, they became offended by the teachings of the message. And they rejected the prophet. Therefore, in 1956, he's telling us, now the Pentecostals are dead. And they are graveyarded. That is the only last religious group that is available for the word to be preached. So there's no more word. Therefore, now the scripture says, now go to byways and highways. And get people that are limping and blind and halt. Which is us now. Tell the people, us, the table is already spread. The food is already on the table. Come and eat. Now we are invited to the feast of the Messiah. We are eating from the body word of the Son of Man. To heal our lame bodies. To heal our whole hands. To heal our minds. Insane, insane mind. To heal our insanity. So that we can be sober. In the word of God. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? And now God, out of nothing, comes out the bride. And God gives them what? The Holy Ghost. Opening of the word. Arming us. Dressing us. I want you now, change our minds. Give us the mind of God. When we see South Africa, we don't see the way South Africa sees South Africa. We know what is happening. We are aware. What is going on in the Middle East, we are aware of that. What's going on in Europe, we are aware of that. We are staying stable on the word. We are not offended by any of the events. We know we are candidates fit enough to go. Remember, church, when Enoch left with God, there were guarantees. Are you with me now? Guarantees. And the guarantee that Enoch is going to the rapture was to walk with God. Was to walk with the word. It does not take us by surprise, Pastor. It must happen whilst it's impossible to do it. It must happen during that time. When things are tough, God will have to find a way for us. He must make a way. We must have a guarantee. We must have an approval. And that is how can we walk with the word. Agree with the word. Do you think Enoch? Ask Enoch. I mean, you can't, you, were you not, did not have a family. Where was it? Where was your church? Where was your pastor? Where were your deacons? That's to walk alone. It was not easy for a man. Because his peers, relatives, associates, they were not there. And that's why President Sage of my ministry, God told the prophet, he says, if you're going to walk with everybody, you can't walk with me. You got too much friends. And you are not even discerning which is good for you or not. People that supported you financially you think they are your friends. I'm not calling them to work with you now. I'm calling you to work with the word. So the, the Holy Spirit was bound. That's why there's never been a true teaching in the churches. Let me just suggest something to you, which I know is true. When you were in Pentecostal church, speaking in tongues, was that the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Did you receive the Holy Ghost in the Pentecostal church? It can be. You are the prophet tells you in the message Holy Ghost, he says, you cannot receive it if you are not taught. The very Holy Ghost that you received, there was a third person of Trinity. Yeah. How can it be true? Resumation of all ages, but the Bible said that Holy Ghost that fell had demons with it. Amen. That's why the Holy Ghost of the Pentecost cannot tell them that they are naked. 
It doesn't condemn the caller in the Bible school. All right, let me close. To we went down to closure. He says, the church ages been bound, not in the river, but at the door of creeds and dogmas. The Holy Spirit can't work in the, ch the church because of man-made system. But she is going to be liberated. She is coming back. That's what the Bible says. She's coming back. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Now, you'll also notice, church, that uh, it is in this time that, uh, you know, Esther... Let's quickly go to the book of Esther chapter 5. I'm closing with that scripture. Just to show the type of faith we should have for our rapture. Now you know Esther this is, Brother Benham, he says, this book is our perfect type. Amen. Then he says, this book is in the foreign country. You'll notice when you read this book, there's no mention of God. God is not mentioned here, right? Though they were people of God, but yet there's no word God is saying this and God is saying that. The people that were in this province, that is now the India, Middle Persia, this was a government under a kingdom of Meds and Persia. They were in India. The headquarters then was Shushan. Right. Now, Mordecai was a Jew. Esther was part of that crew. But in this case, that's for the interest of redemption. You'll always notice our types and shadows would happen. Here is Joseph, an Egyptian, sorry, an Israelite. Then now when he is in Egypt, he emulates and he makes himself a Gentile. Do you notice that? Then he makes himself a Gentile. He will change even in the language and will have an interpreter hiding himself under the seven seal as a Gentile. So that is not known even by the Jews. Are you following now? And here is Jesus during his time, right? And therefore now you will notice that Jesus, as much as he would have only Jews with his disciples, there were also some Gentiles that were with him. The Canaanites, if you read your Bible, there was a Canaanite, there was this and there was that or that. Right. Therefore now you'll find that the respect that he was having was not with the Jews but with the Gentiles. And now the faith that he was looking for was never been found among the Jews. They were found among the Gentiles. Amen. Are you following now? Seraphician woman, the centurion, and that's where he will tell you there's never been such a faith even in Jerusalem. He speaks to the faith that he saw with the Gentiles. There's always a Gentile and actually the Jewish church. In the end time now, when Jesus is supposed now to finish off right, his ministry, doing what he was doing with the Jews 2,000 years ago, that he must do with the Gentiles for us, giving us a chance of the Messiah. The same Jesus Christ, when he comes now among the Gentile church, he took on a white skin. Yeah. Unveiling of God. Yeah. He took on the white skin. Yeah. Now when he is here with the Gentiles in America, Jesus, in the form of a prophet. Yeah. The prophet is not Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus borrows that body. Step in. And the prophet is telling unveiling of God, I've been veiling the pillow of fire all these years. 
Are you following now? Yes. So now when he is with us, are you with me now? Then he does what he's doing to us, but his mind is also with the Jews. Are you following? Yes. Then now when he heard a brother who went to Israel giving tracts, the Jews told the brother, this is not going to work here. We are waiting for the Messiah who can design, who can do what he did, you know, you know then. Then, Brother Brenham, when he was told that, he said, something in me jumped. Now, who jumped? Jesus. Then he said, it's my time. The Jews are looking for the Messiah. Are you with me now? Brenham is veiling Messiah the Jews are looking for. So now when the Jews, they say, we are waiting for the Messiah, something in Brenham jumped, and he says, it's, it's the time. He even bought a ticket to go to Israel. He even says, I know where I will find them. As he was in Cairo, Egypt, here in Africa, then the Holy Ghost came, it's not the time yet. He doesn't say you are not the one to pray. He says, no, it's not the time yet. And the prophet changed the ticket to, to Rome. So there is that tendency in scripture. Now, in this case, now they are in India. King Ahasuerus, the, man, the name Ahasuerus means the Almighty. So now, she, he had Vashti. The prophet says, Pentecostal church. And Vashti, did not want to come when he was invited by the king. He refused to come to the word. She refused. And therefore now, the king was left without a wife. Potential divorce. And therefore now, the seventh man in the kingdom of King Ahasuerus which would be an Indian. His name is Memuken. Advise King Ahasuerus. How must it be done? Because he's always a gentle prophet. That is to call the bride. So in this case, he's a gentle man. His name is Memuken. He tells King Ahasuerus, if you allow Vashti to do what she's doing, we will never be respected with our wives in the whole province of the king. Therefore, the king took an advice from the seventh man. And Brother Branham said in the message, marriage and divorce, the wisdom of marriage and divorce was brought in by Memuken. Then he will tell you that marriage and divorce is a part that has never been touched in the Bible. Therefore, now when Moses came, we know what happened. There was no teaching of marriage and divorce. When Jesus came, there was no teaching of marriage and divorce. Jesus says it was not so in the beginning, but he doesn't tell what was it. Here comes Paul. He says, I, Paul, but not the Lord. Therefore, now throughout the ages and throughout all the human history of the, of, of the Bible, there's never been, the revelation of the marriage was never been touched. And therefore, Brother Brenham is looking for it. Brothers are putting pressure on Brother Brenham. They marry three times, four times, you know. But Brother Brenham says, stay like that. I don't have an answer. When he was supposed to go, knowing very well, I'm going now, 65. He goes to the Lord. He says, you know that I cannot live without this revelation. I'm the prophet that reveals all the mysteries of the Bible. You must tell me how this case is being conducted. And scripturally, if you take me home, you'll be wrong, scripturally. He's telling God. God, knowing very well, Brother Branham is a prophet who reveals all mysteries. And the prophet is crying, I have not get the revelation of marriage and divorce. It's never been touched. And God invited him on the mountain, Catalina. And then he went up on the mountain. Sat down. Prophet sat down. The pillar of fire sat down. What is your case, William Brenham? My case is that you're going to take me very soon. And I cannot leave the earth without knowing the revelation of marriage and divorce. 
And God reminded the prophet, remember the sweat is with you. I am quiet. Revelation 8 tells you that I'm silent. I cannot talk. You talk. What do you want me to do? No, I want you to forgive them. No, not me. You, William Brennan. Go and read that message. You, the one that must forgive them. Here come the prophet to us now, having the book marriage and divorce. He said, this message I'm going to preach today is for the people who believe me. People who follow me. Then he says, to you who married two, three times, who followed me, who believed me, I forgive you. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Where was this wisdom? From the book of Esther. So Esther came in through that mystery. Came in through that wisdom. Now Esther is with? Is with them. Now, Haman this time is going to kill the Jews. Esther is part of that. That is now World War I type of a scenario. That was supposed to kill both Jews and Gentiles. Bride and the church. Now Haman has been given a decree, a written permit. You kill all the Jews. Mordecai changed the clothes. He wore sackcloth. He went straight to the gate of the palace. And there was a messenger between Mordecai and Esther. Exchanging words. And Esther decided to tell Haman the word that is written is the law. That is the law. He says, tell Mordecai there is a law written. The law says, anyone now who goes to the king without being invited, that person must be killed. That's the law. It's written. Mordecai tells Esther, says, don't think you are safe. Because we depend on you now. Your move will save 144,000. All we want you to do, Esther, bride, step inside the Shekinah glory now. Go inside the Holy of Holies. That's the only thing waiting for you, Esther. That's where the king is. He told Brenham, I will meet you there. So you, Esther, that is still lingering outside, thinking that you are well favored. Your favor happens when you are inside. Go inside. She says, the law. He says, don't think you'll be safe. We don't have time to play. Step in and speak to the king who is authority to stop this nonsense Haman is doing. Then Esther knew it's the truth. She says, I'm going in. If I perish, let me perish. That's where we are, church, today. Let's step in where the prophet has received these things. He says, I receive them on my knees. Let's step in where? In the Holy of Holies. Where we meet God face to face. And we talk our issues over. Don't get out if we have not met him. He stepped inside. Then the king saw her. Extended scepter. Then the king now was quiet. Esther is talking. Haman does not know there was a change of authority. He doesn't know. He thought things are still the same the way it's been written. And then the banquet is called, as I told you. Then now, the implicated one is Haman. And all of a sudden, Haman hears that the judgment is not now with the king to him, it's with the bride to him. It's the bride now who has become the final voice. She's now the final voice. When he was still waiting for King Ahasuerus to speak, King Ahasuerus says, no, there's seven sin. Touch me. I don't talk. The wife, my wife, my bride, part of me talks. Whatever she says, I do. And if you follow the book of Esther, it is by Esther that Haman is killed. It is by Esther that Mordecai is elevated. 
And the scriptures are saying, without us, they cannot be made perfect. We are holding a key, church. We are holding a key. Let's not waste time. Outside in the world is death. There's nothing for you. I sometimes worry for people that backslide to the world. What are you doing there? What is for you in the world? Worldly people are running away from their own world. And you are living this glorious gospel. You are going to the world. What are you doing there? What are you doing there? You see? Can I see one sister just backslid? Just as she was entertaining herself, AIDS. She died in that condition. Kept herself clean all these years. Backslid just to die of AIDS. What is there? It's Ichabod there. There's nothing for you in the world. Stay in the word. Be patient. Follow God with all your heart. Love him with all your heart. And God will bless you. God bless you. stand on our feet and appreciate what the Lord has done this afternoon. Oh, that's so wonderful. Let's give another hand of appreciation. Oh, so nice to hear the Lord speaking unto us this morning. How many are blessed now? Amen. Amen. The same God of Esther has become our God as well. Hallelujah. It was by Esther that Haman was condemned. It was by Esther that Mordecai was elevated. Hallelujah. Esther is you. Hallelujah. Everything that you bind here on, in, on earth will be bound in heaven. Hallelujah. Everything you lose here will be lost there. It is by you that peace will be established. <laughs> it is by you that your family will prosper. Hallelujah. It is by you that you will see goodness. Because the words of God is in your heart. Hallelujah into a supernatural place. Oh, we have heard God's words. Amen. You know, when these things are spoken, I love what uh, the pastor said here. That should be really what every one of us should consider. You cannot fight the devil if you are in a natural realm because these demons are supernatural and you have to also be in the supernatural. Hallelujah. If you want to overcome, you must come out of the flesh. You must come out of the natural realm and move in the supernatural realm. The words that were spoken here, if you hear them naturally, it will never benefit you. But if you can get them supernaturally, something will change in you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ.
reflection of grace. Now I am able to see better than even what Paul could see. If he could say in his day, oh, it is in a dark way that I can see through this glass. But I know there is a day that is coming. A great day. Hallelujah. When that day comes, there will be a light. And that, when that light will shine, then I will know. I will know how I have been known all the time. Oh, that day has come to you, brother. That day has come to you, sister. Why don't you take the opportunity of the light that is shining in this day so that you may prevail, so that you may conquer and overcome all the powers that are managing the conditions in the age in which we are living in. The devil want to hold you down here. But there is a power that has come in order to lift you up. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let this word come in our lives. Thank you. Yes. There is coming a day. Hallelujah! 
Listen, friends, I have visited both places by the grace of God. I went to visit the lower regions. I went to visit the upper region. I have come back as your brother to tell you, do whatever you can do to not miss to go up there. You may lose everything here on earth. Oh, you may live without money. You may live without cars, without houses, but never miss the opportunity. That open door come through the word of God. What a day. A day when the light is shining to help you and I to walk to see that open door. Mm. Oh, quel jour ce sera à manger si je verrai et je vois de face celui qui m'a sauvé par sa grâce quand il me prend par la main il me conduit à la terre
Let's give him appreciation. Let's give him appreciation. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let your spirit move and uh, find a place in our life. Uh, may our lives reflect your word. May our lives reflect your power. May our lives reflect who you are. May we express you in this season. May we be set free from this neurotic age. May we be free from the insanity. May you help us, Lord, in this tough season. Oh, God, we know it's always in a difficult season that you visit your people. You brought Joseph when famine had to be there. Oh, when Esther was there, it's because there was trouble. When Ruth came in the picture, it's because there was recession. We know it is in that moment that you visit your people with revelation, with strength, with power. Oh, thank you, Lord. As we'll invite Brother Piso to come, pray, close the service. Let's just say together, Spirit of God, move. Write your word in my heart. Oh, we want that spirit now to come and, and take this word that was spoken, this word that were in the books, this word to, be, to make them now be written in our lives. So that when we march outside, uh, it is no longer us, but it's now the word expressing the mind that was in the bad part of the mind of God. Because the bride today is the mind of God. She has the mind of God. She knows what to do with the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, move. Write your word in my My whole being comes to my life. Spirit of God, oh yeah, an empty vessel. I want to so that you can come. Oh, Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Spirit of God, watch your way. at the altar of your presence. God, indeed that's our heart's desire, Lord, that we may just be totally consumed, Father, 
by you, Lord, that every fire by every part of our lives may be filled by your spirit, O oh God, that your word, O oh God, may be made manifest in our lives, that, Father, like the scripture says, that we may be written epistles, Lord, that the word moves from the pages of the Bible and that we become Bible, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, those who don't want to read their Bibles may read the Bible in our lives. And, oh, Father, we thank you so much. You have given us the full word. In this hour, Lord, the full revelation of the word is here. And indeed, to us, that much has been given. Much is required, oh God. May our lives match the standard of your word, oh God. Help us, Heavenly Father, in every aspect and in every respect, oh God, to match the standard of this word. Lord, we are so privileged people, oh God, that you in this dying hour of history of mankind, you, Lord God, sent us a special gift, a gift of this message of the hour. And Lord, it is this message, precious Father, that we know holds the power to change our lives, to change these bodies for the rapture, O oh God. Bless your servant richly and abundantly is our prayer, O oh God, who labored, Heavenly Father, this morning to bring this word of life again to us, Lord showing us these glorious nuggets of the gospel. And Father, we are so privileged to see these things. Bless his ministries, our prayer, Lord. Bless his precious families, our prayer, Lord. Bless the church back in Mosul Bay and Georgia, oh God. We pray that, Lord, you continue to prosper his ministry for your glory and your honor. And Father, we pray for our precious Pastor David as well, oh Lord. The local minister, may you bless this local ministry, is our prayer, Father. May you prosper this ministry, is our prayer, Heavenly Father. Lord, that your word may have preeminence, that your word may prosper, O oh God, that your word may fill every heart, every life, Lord, that your light may shine bright, Lord, as this church becomes that lighthouse, Heavenly Father, that, Lord God, the ship that's sailing may see, Heavenly Father, the great lighthouse. Is our prayer, O oh God, as we thank you one, once again for a special time that you gave us in your house. Bless each and every saint this morning, every heart that's set on the administration of this word. May you, Father, meet every need of your children, O oh God. The power, Lord God, is in this word that we have received. All we have to do is to say amen to this word. And Father, it will fulfill itself because the power is in the word. Bless your children in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask and pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many feel revived this afternoon? How many felt empowered this afternoon? Oh my. Thank you, Lord. We are living this place totally different. May God bless you, seven. How many appreciate our Pastor Ronnie? Oh, God bless you, man of God. We were so blessed. Well, this uh, golden nugget, the Lord has put indeed a revelation in your hearts to share with the children of God. And we are so thankful that we have been now uh, privileged to hear such powerful words of God. The words that pertain to the season in which we are living in. Amen. God, for you to overcome today, give you a food. Amen. Material. That will help you to overcome the challenges of today. And this was really enough material, enough ammunition, enough weapon. Hallelujah. We were now, hallelujah, well equipped to be able to face any situation. God bless you all. Uh, we are meeting again on, on Friday for our Friday evening prayer meeting. Everyone is welcome Friday at 6 for our service, then on Sunday morning at 10. God bless you uh, till we meet again. I know. I think I've, I forgot one announcement uh, that, uh, okay, uh, is there something that uh, is, was not announced that I need to say? Uh, okay, the, the pastor is supposed to be leaving tomorrow. Uh, we, we have spent good time of fellowship with him. Uh, the whole week, it was such a blessing. And tomorrow, he's, supp he's supposed to leave uh, for...
Okay, uh, the brothers have got their, the vouchers that they promised uh, last week. They have them there at the back, and I heard that they are also online ones for everyone to be able to access them. So after service, you will see Brother Paul and the team there at the back. Uh, till we meet again, shalom. shalom. Amen, amen. How uh, can we praise God while we are going? If I wait here, another announcement will come. <laughs> I just want to praise God and go. Amen with the word. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, cover me. Cover me, cover me, cover me, cover me, Lord, cover me, Lord, cover me under the blood, cover me under the blood, oh Lord, cover me. Pesuka, 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 Oh, my Lord, Pesuka.